I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through, three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. Brandon, we were talking about recording difficulties earlier. We um, were. Per- particularly talking about uh, electromagnetic radiation and the pain in the ass that it is when it comes to recording on mics. And you you suggested something that I think is a new form of ghost hunting. Oh, I never thought about that so, as go- rock so, and roll ghost hunting. Yeah, so what Brandon suggested was to take an amp attach an electric guitar to it and then point the electric guitar at power sources to see what is giving off electromagnetic radiation. Now, what else do you use? Like, cause basically he's turning a guitar into an EMF reader, right? You're, you're, you're making it yeah. an EMF reader. Rock and roll ghost hunting. I like it. Rock and roll ghost hunting. Like imagine that. Wouldn't that be fucking amazing? Yeah. That'd be great. Like, what else could you use? Like, what other tools could you use? Like, you could make, uh, what should we call it, dowsing rods out of, uh, drum out of drumsticks. Oh, you could. Just walking right? around the house, like, are you here? Can you play an F minor seven? Can you give me just a kick in drum solo, please? <laughs> there's, there's, you have a spirit box, and it just goes, free bird. Free bird. And you're like, damn it. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Or, or uh, uh, you you ask the spirit box, can you drop me a fat beat? Yes. <laughs> and then it just starts beatboxing. It starts spirit boxing, if you will. Oh, a beatboxing spirit box. Oh, wouldn't that be great? That is a really good idea. All right, are we need to start over again because nobody can hear about this. There's. Uh, I, I I think it's more legal than Cougar Island, at least. It's haunted Cougar Island. It's the, oh no! It's the ghost of everyone. <laughs> it's the ghost of everyone who was tranquilized. No, it's the ghost of everyone who uh, uh, where the trank missed. Oh so no! Was, yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> oh, those cougars did not have a safe word. That's what happens. That's why you have an island filled with ghosts. Uh, and then you need rock and roll stars to take care of it. Yes, we'll get, uh, let's see, Henry Rollins. We'll get, um, who's another rock and roll star? Uh, uh, Stan Bush, he's not doing anything. Yes, Stan Bush, he, he, he's not busy at all. Uh, uh, let me grab, like, Huey Lewis in the news, maybe. He, Huey Lewis and the news, at the two oh, separate entities. Steve Vai, though, because Steve Vai has the look of a guy that would be hunting for ghosts. Hmm. Like, he, he just... Owns leather trench coats, not ironically, and also it's not weird. Now, this might be an old one, but what about Ozzy Osbourne? Just throw him on it, that mumbling bastard. He's who you call in to scare the ghost away. (laughs) It is fucking hunchback that he's got right now. How old is he? Uh, He's, that dude, he's done all the drugs, and he like, He's 72. He went to a doctor and he does he is genetically predisposed to not have his uh organs fail as much as a regular human. Cuz they were there was a point in time where they were like why why are you like yeah, like they should probably do the same test on Nikki 6. <laughs> the, or uh uh what's his name? The guy from Guns N' Roses. Um, Axel Rose? Axel Rose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or Slash. Well, slash. Well, slash. Slash is a mythical being, as we know. Yeah, Vunter Slash. Vunter Slash. Devin Townsend. I would send in Devin Townsend. I'm just naming people who are very famous, but for like guitar people, and I don't know. Like everybody knows who Slash is, but I don't know if everybody knows who like Steve Vai or Devin Townsend or like Ingve Malmsteen are. All of which look like they could hunt ghosts. Non ironically. So, what if we had like. A what if we had like a ska version of it, 
and like Aaron Barrett was there with Tokay and oh, like Gwen Stefani when she was still good. Yeah, back in no, her No Doubt days. Back in the No Doubt days, the guy, the with girl the cool from Save Ferris, guitar. whose name I can't remember. Uh huh. What is her name? What is her? Yeah, I was just at the same time. I was like, what is her name? Uh. Oh, Apolo- Monique Powell. Monique oh. Powell. Yes. Apologies to the guy that left the review about uh, uh, uh they talked too much in the beginning. I don't also, care. Also, we don't care. In two, you're statistically wrong if we look at the numbers. Like the true, <laughs> like the episode that uh, he complained on did the. Better it was than weirdly one of our better episodes ever. Yeah. In terms of like listenership, like I'm not even joking. I think it cracked top ten in terms of stuff, which is horrifying. Um, I but w- yeah, no. I will say I have gotten um, new followers that are all crypto uh, accounts on my, like, Instagram and, like, Twitter and Facebook. Like, I'm getting requests from crypto people still on just, like, my own accounts, not, not like, our group. Ooh, la, la, la. I'm so fancy. No, I'm just like, why? Why? Because literally, like... Are you my- talking crypto, like, Bitcoin or crypto, like, not cryptozoology? Not no, crypto is in Bitcoin. So, like, even this morning, I got a new Instagram follower, and it was, like, a cryptocurrency. Someone, like, that sells their services as, like, a cryptocurrency banker. Oh, my God. I, I'm so tired of it. We had... So, we had... We made changes to the Facebook group. But my Instagram There's... is only pictures of guitars and my wife. I don't know, Brandon. Maybe it's they know. It's donkey hands. It's not even at crypto whatever. It's just... It's donkey hands. It's pictures of guitars. And a lady. Maybe and they think... Cats. Maybe they think all of that was paid for by Bitcoin or Dogecoin. You don't know. Maybe. I have to open up my laptop and see how much Doge I've got. <laughs> I have 37,000. Uh, 37,564. Yeah, I, I don't know. And I do have to open it because um, even if it gets like... Because the last time it was, it was fractions of a cent. or fractions It's of a five nickel. cents right now. It's five cents right now. So that's actually very good for Doge. Yeah, that's insanely good. And also, I did some math, and the theoretical maximum for Dogecoin is $5, if you're wondering. So if it hits that's $5, also, if it ever hits $5, just sell it, because it's yeah. probably not going to go higher. Yeah, also, even though you said it's a nickel now, and you have 37000 that's still $1,800 of like meme coins that you oh, have. Yeah. And you know what the fucked up thing is? I paid zero dollars for all of my Dogecoin. Oh yeah, me too. This is I when mined Doge first everything. came out. Wait, I, I would just leave my laptop running, and it got to a point like I had it on like things so it wouldn't overheat. So because I, I, I was running that hot, I was overclocking my laptop. <laughs> I was impressed that I got twenty dollars worth of Doge. To be yeah. totally honest and with I you. And I do know like, you have more than me. Yeah. I have to figure out how to get it out of my wallet because my wallet is stuck in, like, an ancient block in the chain. But I can figure out how to get your private and public keys for you if you need it. Because there's... I have to... Yeah, I'll have to see if I can't get into that wallet and get it back in. Because I still have... Even though I had less than you, I think I had more... Over half of what you had. You had like still... 20 or something like that. Yeah. Which is still not bad in like real person money now in this meme thing that we had a while back. I remember sitting next to you at, in Kai's kitchen and like... We just were joking about phones it. Open. We were joking we... about it, but still had the, the app up like tracking its value. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, if it hits $5, Brandon, I own my house finally. So there's that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I hope like, it does. I, I hope you can pay off your house with a meme. Oh, I do too. That would be like, that would be something good in my life after all the nonsense that I've been putting up with lately. Yeah. Um, that would be, that would be a moment of joy for me. Also, then I would have like way less worries about like, you know, surviving through getting my PhD. <laughs> yeah. Because I wouldn't have to worry about paying off a house anymore. I just have to pay, worry about insurance and taxes. It's literally mm-hmm. all I'd have to care about. 
Yeah. Which I you need to get your PhD because of all the jokes I can make. We can make a lot of jokes and we can say a lot of false statements on this podcast um, that make this podcast seem like it's better than it is because I yeah. will have a doctorate. Like, yeah, it, it'll add. I will. I won't. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to toot my own horn. I'm not really good at tooting my own horn. You know that. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> it would definitely add an air of legitimacy to this totally totally illegitimate thing there's we do research we do but it's like it's like baby's first research i also do a lot of research with an open beer can you you'd be surprised at how many researchers do research with an open beer can brandon there's actually i don't, I don't think i'd be surprised <laughs> you would usually that's where the typos happen in my write-ups that makes sense. That tracks. That tracks. If you're like, how the fuck did he spell it that way? It, there it is... are some... <laughs> you have some creative spellings, I'll say. Yeah, like, I was also never good at spelling. I was never good at English. That's that's fair. I... I didn't enjoy English. I liked reading, but I didn't enjoy English. I, I will reading. say... I, I was also a very bad reader. I'm still a very slow reader. I was never good at reading. I'm a slow... I'm fairly slow, too. Um... My main problem is I fall asleep when I'm reading uh, stuff that isn't fantasy. Um, That's fair. I, I just, I'm really bad at that. Like, I know I should be reading nonfiction more, but like... Why? Why, why? would the Wheel of Time saga exists? Why? <laughs> I mean, I'll probably just reread the John Dies at the End series again, because there's a new book coming. Um, is there another one? After there's, there's a, John there's Dies a, at the End, this book is filled with spiders, and then... Uh, even dude, what the spiders? hell was that? Oh, uh, I dude, what the hell did that. I re just read? I think. Hell did I just read? What the hell did I just read? Um. Also, that is the most accurate title for a book ever. Because after I finished reading that book, I was like, "What the hell did I just read?" <laughs> <laughs> like. I love the John Dies at the End series, but that one, like, really fucked with me. Like, well, real bad. More, more what the hell did I just read than uh, House of Leaves? Well, okay. I never, never finished. I've never been able to finish House of Leaves, so I'm going to say I don't no. Think, I'm going to go out on a limb and say I don't think anyone's ever finished House of Leaves. I have House of Leaves sitting on my bookshelf as, like, a... It, it's kind of like a reminder of my own mortality, <laughs> like it's there it's there just to remind me that this too shall pass in its yeah. own sense because i'll never fucking understand where that minotaur came from because there's, there's a, minotaur a minotaur in that book yeah I there is to the minotaur there is there is um it's somewhere it's somewhere in the footnotes it's, it's somewhere in, in those footnotes i feel like house of leaves it's a very much a book that you can only read at a certain time in your life. And that time for us is past. Because Book of Leaves can only be read when you're in mid to late high school, early college. And you have to hear about it from the stoner kid. And then, like, there will be people that will say, like, you can't be sober and read the book. I fully agree with that notion. As a person who's been sober my whole life, I legitimately don't believe that you can read House of Leaves sober... And retain sanity. Yeah. Um. But yeah, yeah. That was thirty dollars I spent <laughs> back in 2012, 2010 money or so. I don't know. Yeah. Fuck, I'm old. Um. All right. I, I guess let's do the podcast before I get sad again. Because all right, it's been a sad week for John. Um. So. This is a podcast where we talk about monsters and stuff. There's a better way of putting it, but I, I don't I don't say that. That's Brandon. Listen to that in two weeks or last the last time's episode. He'll have a better way of saying it. Um, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And this week we're not playing a guessing game because I literally don't know how to make you guess either of these things. Oh, um, intriguing. So I was originally... I spoiled on the discord 
Uh, I posted a picture of Arthur holding his fist, clenching his fist angrily. Um, Because I was going to be working on a different episode. Then mental health happened. And now I'm working on this. I worked on this episode. Um, (laughs) uh, So, Brandon. Yes. This week, there are two stories. They're both alien stories. The Mm -hmm. first one takes place in Missouri. And the second one takes place in Brazil. Can you come up with a name for either of them? Uh, yeah, I'll call it the, the, the Missouri Spaceman Incident and the, um, uh, 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 the, the flying, the flying, the Brazil Incident. Those are kind of, those are kind of sad. Like, I was expecting something a little funnier from you or a little more like... Uh, Jokey. I, I was trying to think, think of Brazil references, but then I remembered I didn't have any. That's fair. That's fair. Um, so, and then Missouri is just the Missouri mud month. Like there, there's, yeah. Well, Missouri's Missouri. Yeah, I believe there's a joke. I believe there's a joke in uh, uh, Fairly Odd Parents where um, Huckleberry Finn comes to life or Tom Sawyer comes to life, and they're like, "I ain't going back to Missouri." <laughs> uh so yeah uh i threw it in the 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 the, the folder the shared folder um nice. so i'm still working on the jersey devil and a dinosaur related episode but as i said mental health stuff uh so i put them off in lieu of a grab bag of stories that give me legitimate joy because i don't think i've ever read a uh alien story and didn't feel a sense of joy at just the bizarreness of it um so i'm doing alien stuff this week i deal I with do it like that the, the header says anger deferred for now for now oh oh i also discovered i have a book on the monster the the dinosaur that i'm covering um so i'm gonna rip that one a new one uh okay it's about that time of the year for me to do a angry at dinosaurs thing because like historically when i did the the roping uh that was a february may march time frame um so so we'll make this a, a time of year thing i think discovery channel has shark week cryptopedia uh-huh. has john's angry at dinosaurs week pretty much pretty much so this time i'm covering two strange little stories that really don't have the depth or sources to carry an episode of their, own, of their own. Buckle up, because they're weird. <laughs> <laughs> so the first week's the first story in this week's Alien Medley uh, that I could find takes place in Tuscumbia, Missouri, which I probably butchered because that's who I am. Uh, in 1967. As a, as a caveat going into this, the earliest record I can personally find originates. In 2011, oh, on the American a, Monster another site. Another one of the fun ones. Yeah. Uh, the site is currently defunct, although I have a web archive capture of it from 2014, which we'll be using as today's main source for this story. So, usually, when I'm looking up a story, Brandon, I yes. look at the history of the town. Generally, if it's an American thing, because a lot of the time, if it's another country, I don't look it up if it's like a different language, because simply put, it's going to be difficult for me to like a lot of the times, like Brazilian towns are not exactly well documented on English internet. Right. Yeah. Um, so Tuscumbia has literally no noteworthy historical details. Perfect. Apparently to the T. To the, it's like prototypical small town. It's apparently the seat of Miller County, Missouri, and was laid out in 1837. That's basically everything other than census data I have on the town. Oh, it's noteworthy. It's like Westview. Yeah. Oh God, such a good show. Um, Wanda Vision. If you don't, if you don't know what that is, set in Jersey, which I have a. Uh, what would you call it, Brandon? Like a cosmic link to New Jersey? A, a cosmic link? Um, like, like it's maybe... like practically destiny for me. 
that I'm somehow tied to New Jersey for my whole life. Like, I, I'll, I'll call it, like, it's your fetish, but in the original meaning of the word, not the sexy time meaning of the word. I, I'm, <laughs> and I now giggling. need to look it up. An it, inanimate it, it, object worship, worship for its supposed magical powers? Yeah. I worship New Jersey? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Oh, God. It's magic powers are, are what attracts you to it. Maybe, maybe. I, I don't know. I, I just, I was joking with Brandon that if I ever moved to a different, like, if I moved to California and I was looking for a relationship, the odds are that the person who I uh, talked to would be from Jersey because that's my life. Um so the population at this time, at the time of the story, was somewhere between a whopping 231 and 256, according to the U.S. Census data. That's like less than a graduating class. Yeah, I think that's where, uh, um, I'm trying to think if that's more or less than the area where I grew up. I'm, it's I'm probably close. It's probably close. It's probably close. It might actually be smaller, because that's a fairly dense area, like, in terms of houses. Yeah, true, but then there's also a lot of woods. There is a lot of woods. But regardless, um, we'll, we'll, we'll cover the population a little bit later. Um, so the hero of our story, this first story this week, is Claude Edwards. And half, half, they are half the size of the area where I grew up. Oh my god! Half. The okay. People. Wow, that's saying something. Four hundred and fifty. Is, is that's is, saying something? That is, is a, that is the last updated census data for that. That's area. horrifying to me. Um, <laughs> so the hero of this story is Claude Edwards, a and I quote from the article: "No nonsense, Missouri farmer." Which, I want to point out, that particular line is what made me select this this part, this particular story. Because fair. You, you can never have a no-nonsense Missouri farmer in a story and it not be something wonderful that you're about to read. Um, <laughs> yes. At the time of the story, he was age 64. Please tell me he sets up some elaborate trap or fires guns at things he doesn't know what they are. Well, Brandon, that would be telling. Okay. So, on an early cold morning of February 14th, 1967, what? Edwards was... Hmm? It's a oh, Valentine's shit, that's, Day. It's a Valentine's Day event. It's a Valentine's Day event. I didn't Day realize event. that. It's also, like, really close to this week's episode release date. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize that while I was writing it. Okay, well, that that's fun. That works out perfect. That works out perfect. This is our Valentine's episode now. Um... It's very romantic. He he has a very loving relationship with the aliens. Sensual. Um, <laughs> he, so he asks Ed, for the probe. He does. He does. He requested it. Um, so Edwards was doing some undisclosed work on his land. And I say undisclosed not being like nefarious or anything. They just literally don't say what he was doing. I'm assuming farmer stuff. But Probably like farmer stuff. You know, farmer stuff. Um, so as he approached his eastern field, he was greeted by a strange sight of his cows staring in the same direction. Following their gaze, Edwards saw a large grayish-green mushroom-shaped object, approximately 18 feet in diameter and 8 feet tall at its apex. It had a stem that elevated from uh, elevated the base of the dome up a little more than 3 feet. Just a, just a, s- a touch more. So very... It had a stem. A stem. It literally okay. looked. It literally looked like a mushroom. Okay. So here, did did he have any history of substance abuse? Because I I just listened to a podcast and there was a UFO incident, or someone disappeared, but they, the 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 sister of the individual who disappeared and was claiming that there were aliens, did say that he had recently started using LSD every single day. Oh. Uh no. Also, and when was LSD discovered? Where, whereas the hosts of that podcast were pushing, hey, it could be aliens. I submit it, but it was uh, involved the LSD 
and getting lost climbing the mountain where they were going to, he claims that UFOs were going to pick him up. I think I actually know, I think I actually know that story, but I could be wrong. (laughs) It's possible. I mean, let's be real, like, uh, there are so many stories where someone just gets lost and, like, you could literally explain it away as a trip gone bad. Yeah. And there are also a surprising number of cases where, like, something happens, and we even covered some where, like, people, like, they're, like, driving back from the liquor store, and then something happens. But but, but people fess up to, um, using at the time of a sighting a lot more than you would think they would. Yeah. But, you know, let's just ignore that. Um... (laughs) So the object had a smooth, seamless metallic surface, which bewildered the witness. Uh, the bewildered witness compared to shiny silk. Okay. Twelve-inch uh, oval-shaped portals lined the base of the structure, emitting a bright rainbow of colors that were nearly blinding. So, like, apparently they weren't windows, but like, there's no good reason to say that it wasn't windows if we're taking the nuts and bolts UFO stance on this. Like they, they it, make some assumptions. If it was nighttime and they were windows, um, if there was a light source on the inside, um, it could look like there were lights shining out. I mean, like if it's nighttime yeah. and someone's house has their window open and their lights are on inside, that I, window will emit light. I don't know how bright it was or what time of day it was. That's There's, the only thing. How many lumens? Did he give us a specific number of lumens? I don't know if a farmer from 1967 would even know the term lumens. Lu- it's just a fun... It's like legumes. It's also a very good word. It's got a lot of... It's got an L in it. I like L words. That's fair. Lavicious lore. Yep. <laughs> um... So, overall, it's a pretty small craft, um, and it's not much bigger than a van. Like, I mean, with the curve of it, of the dome, it's probably not that much bigger than even, like, a mobile room van. Like, you know the ones I'm talking about. Yeah. Right? The ones on the dirty websites. The ones on the dirty websites. Yeah. Um, So, like, like, because really, let's think about it. It's 18 feet in diameter, which is really not that much longer than a car. No. And some in some cars that's even smaller. Like like certain trucks, that's a smaller thing. Yeah. Like it's we're it's talking specifically three Brandons in diameter. Yeah. We're we're talking like a large truck or like smaller than a tractor trailer in terms of like the size of this thing. Oh yes. So like it's minuscule by all accounts. Which there's only one. Because it's this guy is the only person who saw 18 it. 18 by how tall was the dome? By 8? Eight? 8 feet. But take off 3 feet because of the stem. So it's only 5 feet tall at the apex. Yeah, so including the stem, it could fit in a living room. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. It yeah. could definitely fit in my living room. There's no yeah. doubt about that. Um, so, like, whatever. Uh, the occupants, however... Of the, the the craft, they did match the size, at least a little bit. Okay. Um, as Edwards approached the craft from seventy feet to fifteen feet, he was able to make a group out a group of small, three foot tall creatures who had a similarly similarly. <laughs> Words are hard. <laughs> Words a are similarly grayish green skin tone. Although based on the picture that he provided, I call it more yellowish green. But you know that's just that's just hues. Um, Edwards made no comment on the status of their hands for these creatures. And by that, I mean, he drew them handless. Oh, okay. Did and they just like, lack hands? They were I, all in a terrible manufacturing accident. Apparently. <laughs> um, and he claimed that they had either goggles or large black eyes. Their mouths were dark protuberances of unknown function, and their means of locomotion was not visible to Edwards. It's... That's that's what I'm going to start calling penises. It's a protuberance of unknown function. I mean, that's really what it is. Let's be real. I don't know what it's for. Um, He watched the creatures buzz back and forth beneath their craft, arms swinging frantically as they went. Edwards would later describe these necklace creatures as resembling penguins. Thus, 
This case is sometimes known as the Space Penguins of Tuscumbia. That is amazing. That's maybe the best name ever. Oh, yes, that's also part of the reason why I did it for this week. It, it was a two, it was a double, it was a double thing. Because Space Penguins of Tuscumbia is like, all right, I got to see what this is about. You and then I see, click. then I see no nonsense Missouri farmer. And I'm like, okay, it doesn't matter how long this is. This is an, this, there's a part of an episode here. Yeah. Like I, there's no reality in which I can't make an episode out of this or part of an episode. <laughs> at least. Um, that is very fair. I'm sure the listeners, thank you. I mean, I'm glad it brought joy in my life. Uh, so his description of the creatures is fairly vague, despite being only 15 feet from them. His mm-hmm. inability to see their means of uh, terrestrial locomotion is also strange as well. And now, Brandon. How old was he? 60-something? 60 67. His eyes might not be that good. 15 feet, though, Brandon? His eyes like, might not be that good. That's looking at someone on the other side of a car, like the far end of the car, like a little bit off. Yeah. Like, that's not that's not far at all. Like... That's like on a football field. That's like one and a half of those white line things, the yard lines. Yeah. Let's see. Oh boy. Okay. That, um, oh wait, no, that's five. I'm wrong. I'm I'm dumb. Cool. He, uh, three, three of them. He he drew uh, what I could best describe for the image of these creatures as Kermit's penis. It is. It is. Um, well, well, Kermit's got some problems, first of all. Well, Kermit should get the end looked out, but it's a green... It looks like spilled pea soup. He's got some skin tags, is it what does. I'm going to say. It looks like... Imagine if a six-year-old drew Sonic the Hedgehog, but green. I don't have to imagine that, Brandon. Oh, you, you can actually just... Yeah, okay. I could just Google Sonic the Hedgehog and... Sonic the Hedgehog plus green, and I'll see at least a hundred things that look like this. Turn off safe search, though. Oh, I I never have it on. That's how you get the good results. Um, People are actually a little bit better at drawing than I want to give them credit for. There's a Sonic the Hedgehog known as Scourge. I'm going to go ahead and add NSFW and see what happens. Surprisingly nothing. Oh, this is not... This isn't even an original character Do Not Steal. This is like a legitimate actual character in Sonic the Hedgehog. What the fuck? Yeah, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Why is Sonic lore so complicated? I don't know. Oh, okay. If you add NSFW and keep scrolling down, the why is Keanu Reeves? What Keanu Reeves? What are you doing to that hedgehog? If you oh no, don't, what? don't. If you Google Sonic the Hedgehog Green NSFW and keep scrolling down, eventually there's just a picture of Keanu Reeves. That's amazing. Uh, oh, that's not a hedgehog. This is oh that's experiencing Sonic inflation adventure. Okay, cool. Uh, we're moving on. So regardless, as Edwards approached the UFO, he grabbed a handful of rocks because, in the biggest surprise of the story, he didn't have a firearm. There's an everyone knows that the best thing to do if you see another uh, thing that you haven't seen before, your first reaction should be to bludgeon it with a rock. Because that's facts. That is facts. Although, he is a farmer from Missouri, so what do we expect? Yeah. Um, so, of course, he had to arm himself, as I said. And as you said, you have to do it. You have to. You have to. to. By law, if you're, from, if you're from a Midwestern state and you don't arm yourself upon seeing a supernatural entity, are you really from a Midwestern state? There's, now, now, John, I, I, I'm going to guess this doesn't happen, but is the rest of the article concluded by... Farmer bludgeons little person in green suit with rock. <laughs> that would be really great. I'm like, not going to lie. That would be phenomenal. A green man suit, and they're just having a fun time running around on a hill. And then just, just beats the shit out of Charlie. Bludgeons them. Yes. <laughs> oh, God. This is what you get for being drunk and out of Philly. 
Yeah. <laughs> um, so rock in hand, he approached the craft as he hit an invisible barrier 15 feet away from it. While he couldn't see nor fear the va- barrier, Edwards described it as though he were walking against a wall. Backing off a bit, Edwards hurled a stone in the direction of the mushroom-shaped object. Reportedly, he was attempting to puncture the craft with a rock. However, it bounced to the ground off the supposed force field. One, he got fucking mimed. That's funny. And two, how, what's he mean, puncture with a rock? You can't he wanted, puncture a car with a rock. Why do you think you could you puncture can. a spacecraft with a rock? You can, you can puncture a car with I a mean, rock. I mean, excluding the windows. You can, you can, you can, if it's a sufficiently sharp rock or heavy rock, you could probably shred the metal a little bit. I don't think you could puncture, like puncture, I mean like full penetration, like rock passes through okay, the body that's, of the car. Okay, that's different than puncture though, Brandon. Because like, I don't think any of us could so throw a rock. So I have a piece of paper and yeah. like just a little, a little bit through it. That's a puncture that, That's a, Okay, that's a puncture. I still don't know if we could puncture a car with a rock. I think we're underestimating I, the power of car. I think you're overestimating the power of car. Um because I tore I definitely tore a license plate off the back of a car and damaged the back of the car with minimal effort with my scrawny nerd arms. So that's okay. a thing. Um so like that's possible. Um although so funny story to that. Um <laughs> They will never deliver that pizza late ever a fucking again. <laughs> yeah, so funny story to that. Uh, this was after my car. I, I crashed my car, right? Yeah. Um, so I went to the, 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 the scrap lot, and I needed to take the plates, and I forgot to bring um, a socket wrench. I had a screwdriver, but I forgot that my particular ones on the rear – didn't have like any slots in them. or flap head slots. So I had to get creative and tear the license plate off. Oh, because Lord. I didn't feel like driving back or asking anyone for something. Um, yeah. And while that was happening, I definitely heard junkyard dogs barking. <laughs> they were barking at junkyard John. Yeah. Junkyard John. I mean, that's my, that's my future. Let's be real. Eventually. Once I finally like, once I finally truly lose uh, touch with reality, which, Brandon, this is just a matter of time. We all know that this is only a matter of time. It's just it, a, it, it, it won't be long until our listeners see uh, an article about you in the newspapers, and it's just like, man, like, tearing license plates off of cars in, like, uh, I'll say a Denny's parking lot. It, it'll happen. It, I just, I'm like one bad experience away from a uh, a breakdown where I'm just going on a, a tear, tear, literally tearing license plates off cars. I don't know why. Like, listen, listen. I don't make the rules. I just follow them. That's right. So, like, it'll happen. It'll happen. I don't know why it will happen, but it will happen. Regardless, Edwards... <laughs> was not to be deterred. He hurled a second rock at a higher angle, which bounced above the craft and landed harmlessly on the other side. The second attack is what inspired the space penguins to action. Quickly, they entered their ship, which then proceeded to lurch three times forward towards the sun farmer, and the ship then flew away towards the northeast at extreme speed. The whole encounter lasted, at most, ten minutes. And it would be supposedly the only counter that Edwards or anyone else would have with these mysterious penguin-like entities. That's it. There's no, uh, no, no, no. Like, I want the penguins to make a, they need to come back. They don't. They need to. They don't. The, like, and like, literally, there's only one record of this story. It was adapted by Ted Phillips, a UFO investigator who collected Edwards' story um, on the condition that neither Edward's name or location be revealed until his death. Uh, given the recalcitrance to unveiling the story, I'm really not surprised that the town wasn't made aware of this tale, despite its lo- relatively small size. On the other hand, <laughs> this has some Albert Osman vibes to it. Yeah, the, the uh, um, 
so my thing is like if the town is 250 people in it and a farmer sees space penguins he's not going to shut up about that when he goes to the bar well all right you're 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 biased brandon because when you think of a farmer you have a very particular person in mind i'm assuming Pro, yeah so like you're biased in this regard um so your opinion it's not that it doesn't matter it's i've got i've got a few i've got a particular because i know farmers so i've particular you have a particular frame of reference frame of reference for farmers i also have a particular frame of reference for people at bars just saying weird shit around me so so both of those combined now i don't know if he drinks but the town has 250 people so he probably drinks so he probably drinks Let's be real. He <laughs> probably drinks. <laughs> it's 250 people in Missouri. <laughs> yeah, like, people have definitely heard him bitch about, like, a cow's attitude or something, like, one day. Yeah, there's there's almost no doubt about that. Like, he's definitely, like, cursed at a cow at a bar. The cow wasn't yeah. there, but he's just like, fucking Betsy. That bitch. There's gone to the onion patch, and all her milk is soured. God damn it. Meanwhile, there's there's Carl over in the corner. He's like, "Hey, I mean, I like onion flavored milk. Why yeah. are you Why are you this way, dude? <laughs> Carl, this why Why are you like this? Who did this to you? Who harmed you? Um, but yeah. So there's no there's no newspaper event like recorded of this anywhere. Um, I can't find a readily available source for Ted Phillips' original report. And uh, the UFO writers in general need to get better at fucking citing their for- sources yeah i mean yeah yeah link dump at the end that, that's, that's just literally a problem it. with anything ufo related they're very bad at it yeah. they're very bad at it and like they have a bad habit of like pretending that they're the first person to write about the story when they're not yeah that they're is not that is actually very true i know they're not but you know everyone pretends that they are and like i found people who word for word, reproduce the article that I used and didn't call out the original source of the article. That is so, also like, very common. <laughs> you're a bad, you're bad if you do that. You're not a good citizen of the internet, just as a rule. Uh, so don't do that, okay? Don't. It, just just stop it. Just, um, no, stop. No. I'm going to get the no-no can out and shake it at you because you need to be no-no canned. Um, so as a final note on the story, uh, Claude Edwards actually is a real person. I found him. So Um, we know he's extant. We know he's extant, but the age is wrong in the story. (laughs) Oh. And I'm going to assume that there weren't two Claude Edwards existing contemporarily in, uh, (laughs) in Tuscumbia. Yeah, that, that's, we'll play the odds on this one. So like and like the difference in age is like literally two years. So like Oh, alright. I'm gonna assume that I found the right one. Yeah. And that the article's just wrong. But who knows? So our second story for this week takes place a decade later. Nice. Um in a similar vein, I couldn't find very many good sources on this. Uh my only source was a from the slightly credulous ufoevidence.org and I want to take a moment to note that they did not secure the .com on that that site um huh it's a shame I, I don't know what ufoevidence.com even is it's probably viruses it's probably viruses let's see let's let's uh let's turn my vi- antivirus off server not found so they just don't just nobody has it they just didn't want to pay the price for ufoevidence.com Huh, all right. Cool. Okay, so regardless, uh, <laughs> we're learning things on this, this podcast, folks. We are. We're learning things. So uh, Antonio La Rubia was a 33-year-old bus driver when he had his encounter on September 15th, 1977. In, I'm going to butcher this, Paciencia, Brazil. Oh, wait. I think you did good. I- I think I did it. Dan, I think I, I did, think it. did it. I think you did yes. it. Yes. <laughs> okay, so that's the last time I'm going to say that. The look um, of surprise on your face was real. 
I'm not gonna say I'm I'm not gonna say that word ever again. So cool. Uh, so skipping over the frankly excessive biographic data on the interviewer, like Brandon, I'm not kidding you. The first like three paragraphs are talking about the person who did the interview. Oh, like three paragraphs of biographical information on this interview. Uh, everything knows the first thing you do when you're supposed to write about somebody is, is talk about yourself. Start about yourself. Mm-hmm. It's very important. You are the thing that they're hearing this from. They have to know what lens they're getting this filtered through. That's because right. if they don't know the lens, they can't make any assumptions for themselves. That, that's how you write. If you have a minimum word count, you have to hit, and you already wrote everything, and you're not there yet. And you, you've done all the, like, the, the spacing tricks and stuff like that. Yeah. Also, I want to point something out. Um, if you are doing that in, uh, like, a master's or a graduate level thing, people will notice. And you know why people will notice? Because we have to, the people who are grading you have to read so many papers that if there's anything that's slightly different, we instantly see it. <laughs> yeah. Um, like literally the difference between a point on a font, easy to spot. The difference between spacing, easy to spot. Weird, uh, weird, just different margins and kerning. We see that. We know. We, you're not being clever. The only reason that you don't get caught on it in undergrad is because no one gives a shit. <laughs> I will say, even in, like, at work, I'll still receive, like, a customer source control drawing, and I'll be like, why do you th- put two spaces between all the words? Like, the, like the opening paragraph will just have weird spacing, and it's not like they're getting graded or anything like that. Like, they're just sending it to me. You don't know that. Oh, that they they're not getting have, graded? Yeah, they might have a toxic work culture. They, they probably do, to be honest. <laughs> probably. Yeah. I mean, it's America. Like, America. odds are, you have a toxic work culture. Yeah. Like, statistically speaking. Um, anywho. So, uh, Antonio had gotten up at his usual time of around 2 a.m., which is relatable. Uh, <laughs> and he left his house at 2.20. Um, near his home, he saw a large disc-shaped object, which had filled... A nearby fill field. I don't know why it autocorrected to fill. Um, a nearby field. Placing the object at nearly 70 meters across, which is about 235 feet. Okay. Um, believing he had seen a parked UFO, Antonio did what might be argued as the most rational thing anyone has ever done on Cryptopedia. He tried to run. That, yeah, he noped out. He saw it and he went, nope, and just turned tail. He is literally, I, I honestly can't, there, there's so few people who have done that on Cryptopedia. Like, I don't know the exact numbers, but if I had to guess, there's probably a pretty wide margin there. Um, well, he definitely did better than uh, the guy who tried to get Bigfoot addicted to nicotine. To be fair, that dude made it out, apparently. He made it out, and he definitely fiddled a Bigfoot. He might have. Oh, no, he definitely did. That story he... either never happened, or he fiddled a Bigfoot. Fiddled or diddled? Uh, both. Both? Mm. Gonna have to get the uh, the mounted police on this one. Can't have, can't have people going around diddling Bigfoots. And no. fiddling Bigfoots. They're animals. <laughs> Maybe. This this is going to get into a philosophical debate, and I don't feel like going down that road. Yeah. Um, so, especially about all that. Uh, so as he moved to run, a bright blue light illuminated the area, and he found himself surrounded by three robots. Yeah, we got some robots in this that one. That makes more sense than seeing an actual alien in my in my noodle. Because if they're visiting and they don't know it's in our atmosphere, then you'd send a robot and not go in yourself. The same way, like, you might send in, like, an exploratory robot. I don't know. If you're you know, going to the moon or, like, under the ocean, like, send in robots. We send in robots like, everywhere all the time. Like spirit. Yeah. 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 
Although we don't have we don't have a Tony Stark. So, you know, they're all going to be like weird wheeled robots or those Boston Dynamic ones which are terrifying. Did you see the recent thing of them? No, which, which one? They have arms now. They have arms Brandon, now. The dogs have arms now and they can open doors. The last thing I saw was Adam Savage made like made one pull him on like a like what are those things called? A, like a pedicab? He made like a a fantasy looking pedicab and had a Boston Dynamic. All right, let me look. Brandon, Boston Brandon. Boston Dynamics. It had an arm. It had an Rose. arm, yeah. and it was using the arm like a face. And, like, I'm very upset by what I saw. It, it, it It's actually slightly terrifying. I'm oh, not wow. usually I'm not usually scared by technology, but, like, those Boston Dynamic ro- dog robots are slightly terrifying. I don't like this. I'm watching it. I don't like this. It's got, like, it kind of, like, looks like it's looking at you with its hand. And it's not yeah. good. It's not a good feeling. There's a video called Spot's Got an Arm, and it's terrifying. It's it also awful. also looks a lot like one of the robots from a horror movie. Like a sci- I think it was a made-for-sci-fi horror movie. There's, there's, there's literally like a robot a th- machine on a boat that was fucking shit up. There's literally a Black Mirror episode that looks like the Boston Dynamics robot. Oh, wow. Oh, um, they can play double Dutch. Great. Yeah, they can play double Dutch. Yeah, yeah. There, there, there's like they're very quickly becoming human. That's a, as we all know. Sentience, double Dutch. Those are the two things that define humans. Yeah, I would hate for these things. To like, they'll become sentient and then they'll get horny, and that's when the problems start. Well, I mean, yeah. Like, let's be real. <laughs> they were programmed by humans. They're gonna yeah. get horny. Oh, there's no way someone didn't have sex with one of these robots. That happened. Now, not like stock, but they definitely put a toy in the robot's hand head <laughs> and had sex with that robot. <laughs> There's no version of this universe where that didn't happen. There's no v- you version of humanity where that didn't happen. Yeah. That, oh, good, it's planting something. Mm hmm. It, yeah. It's replacing us. <sighs> so back to this week's robot. Um, so the robots stood at an unimpressive one meter tall. They built a robot that could be used specifically for dragging bodies. Oh, good. Now it's drawing a chalk outline. <laughs> They've gone too far. <laughs> oh, I just got an idea for like a hard boiled detective like thing, but it's following one of these robots and it's got like a trench coat that's like dragging on the ground. They've- and it, it's. <laughs> It's an evidence hider. They built an evidence hider. <laughs> I mean, it dug a it dug a hole for a tree and then put a tree on top of it. Because, like, you know, what it's doing is it's digging a hole and then layering it so the dogs can't find it as easy. They, 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 it showed it digging a hole to hide a body and they showed it dragging a brick so it can drag heavy <laughs> things. And then it also drew it so it can make chalk outlines. And you know yeah. what else they do? You kill somebody, you bury the body, and then what you do is you plant endangered plants over the body so nobody can actually get to it because then they hurt the endangered plants. Well, no, it's 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 body, dead dog, endangered plants. Yes, that's the stack. That's the stack. Because then if the dog finds it, it's just a dead dog. And then the dog just gets depressed and leaves. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Um... You bury the parent of the police dog over the body. <laughs> oh, no! And then it, then Wait, it's what, just, what? it smells its parent and it sees the ground and it's just, oh, and rocks away. What information do we got on, on the canine unit? Here's its parent. All right. I didn't want to kill a dog today, but. It's, what, what's wrong with Sparky? I don't know. I think he needs therapy. I mean. So the weird thing with dogs is, like, if they don't find living things, you do actually kind of need to give them therapy because they like finding the things. Yeah. Like, that happened with the 9-11 search and rescue dogs. Like, they were super depressed. Yeah. Yeah. Um. (laughs) Thanks for reminding me about both 9-11 and depressed animals. (laughs) Listen, Brandon, Brandon. 
I'm in I'm in a place. You a are. mental place. And I'm just ensuring everyone else is there with me. Um to be fair though, Brandon, I tried to move her away from the dyna- the Boston Dynamics dogs. I tried. You didn't let me. True. You didn't let me. So now we're here. No, now we're here. but I didn't let you now because we're... I saw the video that you were talking about of these fucking true weird evidence hiding fuck machines that were yes. made. And and oh. then I had to make it sad because How much that's do what they I weigh? do. I don't know, but I don't want to know. Are you thinking of picking up the 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 dog fuck machine? <laughs> uh, I mean, I I oh they've got a human looking one, but we're not interested in that. They're only telling me how much Atlas weighs. I don't care about you, Atlas. You look too human. I want that nightmare creature. <laughs> I'm going to keep going. So the robot stood at an unimpressive one meter tall with an antenna that extended over five foot five inches. It's a very long antenna. Um, That's a the long heads antenna. Of the- this is the 70s. Did robots at that time have antennas? Yeah, Probably. Probably. Because I, I can't... I've not in my lifetime well, seen a real robot. I've seen lots of real robots. None of them had antennas. Because remember... Remember... Um, Lost in Space had like a dome-shaped robot with like antenna coming up off of it. And that like, wasn't a real robot, though. But, Brandon, I'm talking about the zeitgeist. The cultural zeitgeist oh, matters. That um, does. So the heads of the en- entities were shaped like American football... And a band of small blue mirrors wrapped around the center of the head horizontally, with one of the mirrors being a darker shade than the others. I think implying that it like had an eye or something like that. Maybe. Know. Why mirrors? I don't know. Well, that's the way he described it. That doesn't mean that's what it was. Oh, true. Assuming that this is a real thing. <laughs> um, their bodies were stocky, broader than Antonio- Antonio's own, and made of a rough, rough substance that resembled scales. The scales weren't armor, according to Antonio, as they appeared not to impede the creature in any way. A belt filled with syringe-looking apparatus wrapped around the lower portion of their torsos. Two trunk-like appendages made the arms of the creatures, terminating in pointed tips resembling a finger. The creatures were monopods standing on a lone a lone leg which terminated in a platform resembling that of a stool. So like a bar stool type situation. Is there any creature that only has one thing? I think so. But I don't know so. Um, I mean, fish have one tail. I mean, but that like move like terrestrial, like on land. Well, we gotta get, we're not to the point where they move around yet. So like, let's hold it off for a second. So the entire body of the robots were a dull shade of aluminum. And there's a uh, uh, Antonio's uh, drawing there on the next page. And oh, good, he's such such a good artist. Oh wow. I mean, I call that better than the space penguins. Better than the space penguin penguins. The antenna is not to scale. No, no. Um. Yeah, I'm, I'm very confused. The description was very confusing to me. I'm not going to yeah. lie. It doesn't match up with what he drew at all. So, in the blue light, La Rubia couldn't move as the entity surrounded him, floating into place. So, they don't walk or hop. They float. So, there's the, there's the whole thing. Uh, and Antonio then found himself in a bell jar. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, but for the most part, he, found him, he, fe- he felt normal. You know, other than the fact that he's yeah. being surrounded by these entities. Oh, so r- real quick, there are no one-legged animals, and if you look for one-legged animal, monoped, monopod, or anything of that sort, it all comes back to a mythological dwarf with one leg, and then pictures yes. of like flamingos. That sounds about right. There is a. I I actually think I used that in a D and D campaign, once. Maybe. But I think you guys killed them. Probably. We were yeah. just a bunch of murder hobos. You were absolutely murder hobos. There's no question about that. We're um, murder hobos where there's no point into writing anything because we just will get attached to a throwaway NPC whose name you just made up on the spot. Charlie, Lucky. Although Lucky you didn't get as attached to, I was attached to Lucky. You were attached you to You guys Lucky. were attached to, to Charlie. There's Charlie. 
Any of the wishbones, probably. Oh, let's let's not go on the dark path of wishbones now. Okay. <laughs> There's probably an episode in our back catalog where we talk about the story of Wishbone. Oh, I'm sure. Um, we definitely have. Uh, so, LaRubia moved was moved towards the disc as a creature pointed a syringe-like object at him. He approached the disc, felt a tremor, and suddenly found himself in the quarter of a... that was made of, like, an aluminum substance. Huh. <laughs> There's, the creature's only goal is to go to Earth and get people fucked up. Like, hey, bro, we hover. You want this? And they just hold out a syringe. I mean, that's basically the premise of that one, the the, the frat aliens of, uh, of Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Oh, yeah, you're right. Like, that's literally their whole thing. Um, so, you know, that's possible. Uh, <laughs> so looking down at one end of the corner, he could see the field, indicating that the exterior of the craft had a one-way mirror property to it. The creatures left him alone as the UFO was said to have lifted from the ground. At this point, Antonio experienced yet another blue flash of light and found himself in the center of a large circular room filled with dozens of, of robot-like entities. Um, so he is was he finally... Like, is it, what, 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 uh, what's the point? Like, of what, them doing this? Yeah. Yeah, I... Like, is there a goal, or, like, do they eventually do something, or are they just they like, do, look at this they guy? Do, they do eventually do something, okay. although I'm not really sure what they're doing. Um, I'm saying that like I believe they're real. Uh, <laughs> so there was about a dozen of these creatures there. Um, he was able to finally shout, what do you want, who are you? And I'm assuming that's in Portuguese because, you know, this was translated. But, you know, yeah. he might have said it in English. I don't Maybe. know. And they're like, oh, Probably shit, we have the though. wrong translator app on our phone. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> Probably not, though. Probably not. Uh, which resulted in all the creatures falling to the floor uh, with further sh- shouts causing them to grip their teaspoon-shaped antenna, which had been, like, vibrating up until this point. So, like, so, implication that he's causing them pain of I some kind? I think, like, the noise is too much for them. Yeah, which uh, seems like a fatal flaw. It's kind of like uh, rock music in War of the Worlds. Yeah. Or, no, was that Mars Attacks? Mars Attacks was like yodeling, wasn't it? It caused their Mars Attacks is like weird yodeling. Uh, it, it made their heads explode. It was very funny. That movie... Um, it's on Netflix or Hulu right now. That, that movie gave me weird feelings when I was younger. Okay. Uh, Slim Slim Whitman's Indian Call Love. Love Call. Okay. That was the name of the song. Uh, that was the song that killed them, apparently. <laughs> um, there was disembodied heads in that movie. And a woman's head on a dog. Um, those are just statements of fact. Just, just facts. So, just regular, just normal facts. facts. Normal things. Normal things. Uh, struggling to breathe, Antonio then realized that he could hear bre- a breathing sound coming from the supposed robots. Nothing else on that. Okay. That's just what he said. I, um, do, like, I will say this picture is much better. Oh, it's much better because it wasn't dr- it wasn't drawn by Antonio. <laughs> this picture is way better. Yeah. Um. So if it wasn't confusing enough for you yet, Brandon, it gets more confusing at this point. Uh, so apparently in the room, there's a small piano-like device uh, with a tin can-shaped object on the side. The creatures inserted several of their syringes into the tin can, which caused a fresh image to appear on the nearby wall every time it happened. Antonio None of this or makes Nish- sense. None no, of this makes it, sense. It, also, Antonio should be dead. If they were a creature where like regular like speech vo- levels of like v- air vibration cause you to like fall in pain... Make your room be in a vacuum. You're smart, yeah. spacemen. Be in a vacuum. He should so just act- be on the floor suffocating. Actually, now that you say that, there is something that comes up a little later, too. Um, oh, okay. So, at first, Antonio was able to recount ten images, but there's another one that he recounts at a later time, and I'll talk about that in a second. So, I'm going to just go through this list. This is literally pulled from the article, word for words, what they said. And these are the images that he saw after they injected a piano? On a wall. 
Gotcha. So, like, I'm assuming, like, a projection type thing. Yeah. Uh, Brandon, I don't know. I really don't know. I, it might be a translation issue, but I have a theory for what it actually is, and I'll get to you that in a second. Okay. Um, himself, nude, lying on an invisible table. Swinging arms about, his legs lying straight, and two of the beings examining him with their little bluish lights. Directing it at his chest and head, with another entity examining his head with a blue light, which had no beam. It made everything blue, including his hair. I want to point out, he didn't experience this, he saw this in an image. Yeah. So this is not him recounting this happening to him. This is him recounting what he sees in the images. So, okay? but he, he's traveling through blue flashes. So the blue flashes could have been is like the um, Men in Black flash, where like that was the memory wipe of the experience Brandon, of him being inspected on this table. Excuse me. Everyone knows that the the, the memory device is red obviously yeah but Couldn't it's because be it's a movie this is real life it's blue okay all right <laughs> sure agree to disagree so th the second one here antonio saw himself still naked standing okay that's all that he saw so he's just nude Third, um antonio three saw himself at a glory hole the robots looking in horror <laughs> <laughs> uh Three, Antonio was dressed, carrying his shopping bags. His teeth were chattering. He looked nervous. No sound came from him. One arm was swinging. Fourth, the picture showed a horse and cart being drawn over a dirt road. Antonio did not recognize the location, but there appeared a cart man, a peasant, wearing a straw hat, barefooted with a torn shirt. Um, si fifth, Antonio saw a picture of a light orangey ball with himself standing beside it. I'm assuming a basketball. He just never he just never learned about basketball in Paciencia. <laughs> he, he never figured out how to bounce it. He just stands next to them because they're nice. I like I like the way they look. Um six. In this picture the ball was seen once again, this time bluish in color, with one of the beings standing beside it. Okay. Seven. This picture is the most difficult to describe, and whereas we have condensed uh the interviewer's words before, we will use her entire description. A dog was shot trying to get at one of those beings. Also shown in the picture, the dog was big and slobbering at the mouth, trying hard to get at the being, unable to reach it, and looked very angry. Then the dog gave about four or five barks. At this point, the being started to melt from the top to bottom like porridge. So a barking dog melted one of the creatures? Apparently. Uh, apparently these things are too... Uh, fragile to live. According they need to, to this be story. in a vacuum. They just need yeah. to be in a vacuum. Yeah. Um, eight. A factory was seen. Apparently, one of, in quotes, theirs, where the UFOs are manufactured. The scene was white and stretched out, so you could not see the end of it. There were three rows of UFOs. The two on the right were UFOs nearly ready, and the one on the left were UFOs in the making. At the skeleton stage, there were millions of beings or robots walking around. But Antonio noticed no tools. The picture showed a train. This is nine. Uh, like the Japanese train is currently being used in Brazil, but older. Something worse for the wear. Windowless, entering a tunnel, whereupon it was lost from view. Ten. This showed an avenue, which the interviewer compared to Avenida Presidente Vargas, one of the busiest thoroughfares in Rio de Janeiro, jammed with cars. So during this perplexing display, a being then took a syringe in its tentacle and rotated the appendage so fast that LaRubia couldn't follow the rotation. So, like, he basically turned the tentacle, like, the syringe into a drill, I'm assuming. Um, yes, that's what it sounds like. Or he's doing, like, cool butterfly knife tricks with his tentacle. That'd be pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. I'd actually pay to see that. Um, the creature then inserted it into Antonio's middle finger. Causing the syringe to nearly overflow with blood. Okay, so they were extracting with the syringe, not yeah, injecting. But that's not where you would... that. It would be very difficult to pull blood from the middle finger, I feel like. Yeah, that's why they never take it from there. <laughs> I mean, they do, like, they'll do pricks. They'll prick for, like, diabetes or whatever, but whenever you, yeah. like, give blood at, like, LabCorp or whatever, that's going yeah. right in the arm. Oh, yeah, or at least it will go in the, like, the wrist vein. 
Yeah. Right? Like, obviously not where they're going to do it because it hurts. But, mm-hmm. like, you know, I, I guess you could explain it away as, oh, they're robots or aliens. They don't know what they're doing. Blah, 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 they're blah, like, blah, any blah. spot's a good spot. But still, like, like it we wouldn't blood. overflow. with the stuff. I don't think it would, like, nearly overflow. And, like, like there's a lot of bone. There's a lot of bone in there that you can hit. Yeah. Like, I don't know. It. <laughs> this is the thing that I'm I'm drawing a line in the sand on, of course. Not all the other weird stuff. Because, yeah. you know, at this point, I'm just like, we've done this podcast so long that, like, I'm just like, yeah, 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 they believe this. I'm not even going to bother arguing with this fact i might as well pick on something that is just weird and inconsistent with science as we know it and like the way the human body works because like the fact of the matter is everything else they're gonna just ignore me on um, <laughs> <laughs> so the robot took the blood and apparently drew three circles on the wall and dissected them which is not a word you use for talking about circles no. uh, with an l-shaped mark does he mean bisect <coughs> well, it's an L-shaped mark, so it's not bisect. It would be trisect, I think. I, I don't know. I don't know. It- and unless the circles were or- arranged in an L-shape, then you would draw a line straight down. You'd bisect the first one. The second one, you'd be like you're taking a corner out of it, and then it'd go straight through and bisect the third. I don't know why. I don't know why I'm think- putting this much thought in a thing that n- uh, dead- didn't happen. That definitely happened? Yeah, I don't know. So regardless, after the final scene was shown, the one with the avenue, uh, Antonio was thrown overboard and landed in the street near the location he had been taken with his belongings, which hadn't been with him in the craft. Uh, He apparently lost 30-ish minutes and his watch had stopped at 2.20. As he looked into the sky, he saw what appeared to be a giant balloon lifting away. Ultimately, he made it on time to work and throughout the coming weeks felt symptoms. Yeah. He felt symptoms that resembled the events he witnessed in the craft. And now that I'm reading this aloud, Brandon, I don't know where any of the symptoms that happened to him were mentioned in the preceding images. There were there were Be- no, because- no symptoms. And also, who goes to work after getting kidnapped? If I got kidnapped, I would not have gone to work. I probably would have gone to work. Well, at that, the, 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 you, know, you should probably go to like the police and then like therapy. True, true. <laughs> um, so they mentioned like him sh- like shitting himself, uh, and like oh he didn't shit himself, so like that thing didn't happen. But like that was nowhere in any of the images. I literally copied all the images word for word because I didn't feel like summarizing them. Yeah. <laughs> um. So allegedly there was another image which he saw, in which he saw himself with smoke coming out of his back. This image allegedly was tied to an ex well it was tied to an incident in which he felt like he was burning antonio told his wife of what happened to him and i i'm skipping a lot of stuff because there's a lot of like and then this happened and then this happened and then... um so saturday he still was very ill and misworked sunday was the same he could not go to work that night the burning feeling started Wait, which spread through his body burning? oh all over up all over it spread through his body and was very painful his wife rubbed him with alcohol which relieved the stress distress somewhat weird uh i mean on me that would hurt me you yeah that's true (laughs) so on monday morning he went back to the bus company to say that he had quit and he had difficulty breathing was burning and itching he asked fellow his a fellow employee to hose him down with water his fellow workers told him he looked as green as grass Uh, the money that he was at the bus company and experiencing the burning feeling, the company nurse wanted to give him a tranquilizing injection, but he af- he refused, afraid that it would make him worse. The personnel at the clinic told him he had gone mad, and with ropes, ropes were brought to constrain him, <laughs> and he was taken to the hospital where it was generally thought he was mad because he had babbled about UFOs. I mean, at least they took him to the hospital. <laughs> True. Um, he would be cleared psychologically multiple times, however, but he did have a high fever of about 103 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a pretty high fever. Yeah. So ultimately, there's no evidence of this event beyond the purely anecdotal. 
In many ways, it reminds me of the Pascagoula Elephant Men, episode 62, in the description and relative strangeness of the entities. That being said, I don't really think this was a hoax, um, as I did in the Pascagoula case, and the reason for that is that fever. So, to me, this smells a lot more like uh, he hallucinated the whole experience and yeah. tried to come up with explanations for why he felt symptoms. And you learn the fact that the cultural zeitgeist at this point in history has robots all over the fucking place. Because yeah. it's 77. Like, this is, this is you know, post, like, Robbie the Robot and Lost in Space and... This is Star Wars territory. Like, yeah. we're, we're talking about, like, robots are a part of culture globally. And, like, even if you account for the fact that he's in Brazil and there might have been a delay in certain cultural things reaching there because cultural diaspora was slower back in the 70s, like, you're still dealing with 50s and 60s robot images from Hollywood uh, hitting s- screens, right? Yeah. So, like... It's entirely possible that he was, like, influenced by culture. And, like, he had hallucinations. Because, like, I remember when I had 103-degree fever, I thought the world was simultaneously bigger and smaller than me. So, like, <laughs> like everything was bigger than me and everything was smaller than me. Not, like, just one or two things. Like, the world. Um, and it was, like, a superposition of states. So, like, but I don't think that I had become a uh, supernatural entity in that moment or encountered the supernatural. I, my brain, was probably in the process of dying. (laughs) Yeah, always a fun uh, condition. Yeah, so, like, I don't think that this particular one is a hoax, but, like, the fact that they throw in a 103-degree fever in there makes me, like, Like, well... he he, He was really sick. He was really sick. I don't know what... Because, like, they also talked about him passing out during the day, like, black- blacking in and out during the day when he was working. Yeah. I-, I admit it a lot because, like, there's a lot of, like, boring stuff that I don't think is interesting. Um, <laughs> so we're not covering it. Uh, but, like, they-, 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 they talked about a lot of stuff that, like, really, really read, like, the man was dealing with a serious illness and, like, nobody questioned it. <laughs> yeah like the dude probably was just super fucking sick I feel bad for him yeah he he was sick and he might have been taken th- yeah I don't think he was taking drugs I think he was just sick There's... that's my thinking yeah well he he was de- that, that's at least one thing that definitely happened he was definitely sick there's no doubt that the man was sick. And not, like, in a s- psychological sense or, like, a, you know, any of that kind of stuff. He was, like, verifiably sick. Yeah. 103 degrees is, like, a you-need-to-go-to-the-hospital temperature almost. Yes, yeah, which they luckily took him to. Yeah. So, like, yeah, that, that's all I got on the story. Um, It's weird. It's not as funny as the name for the previous one, the, the I space like the penguins. Space penguins. I like them too. I wish they appeared in more places, but they just simply haven't. They just simply haven't. Which you know tells me that they're not real either. But that's a whole other thing. Um. Uh. Anywho, that's that's all I got this week. Um. It was a fun one. Yeah. It was a one. It was a one. I'll say. <laughs> of all of the episodes, this one also exists. Yes, of all of our episodes we've done, this one exists too. Um, as always, going to p- do our plugs. So the website is com. On Instagram, we're at cryptopediacast. Twitter is also at cryptopediacast. Our email is cryptopediacast at gmail.com or us at cryptopediacast.com. We have a Patreon, which is in the show notes. And every week we thank our Jackalope level supporters. And I think it's your turn this week. To yep. give them the thanks. The Jackalopes are Clay Sinclair, Marty Von Party, Bird Schneider, Jonathan Shepard, and fuck Andrew Jackson. Indeed. Oh, did um, we have a Discord? Also, we have a Discord. We do and have a Discord. There's we a, have a weird Discord. picture of a horse in there now. Yeah, yeah, the, the Luigi horse. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's... 
That's an image. That's an image. I think we put it. I think someone put it in blurst images. Was it blurst images or was it cursed images? Was I can't it, remember. Did, did I do that? I think I might have put it in cursed and someone said this is blurst. I don't know. I don't know. There's there's stuff. There's a lot of f- interesting stuff that pops up in there. Um, let's see. It Did was we... cursed. It was cursed. Oh, um, was it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we have a Facebook group too. Um, we had to. I had to actually add mods because <laughs> we've been getting so many people posting Bitcoin spam and cryptocurrency spam, um, and I just got tired of dealing with that. So uh, Clay Sinclair and Linwood are mods now. Yes, and um, I believe they did set up a uh, a questionnaire yeah. to enter the group that's just, you are aware this is not cryptocurrency, right? They also have a joke about about Transformers in there, I think, and Cheetor. Um, or not Cheetor, Dinobot. Or was it Rat Trap? I don't remember. There's it was a, a lot thing. of Transformers talk that happens, too. <laughs> there is a lot of Transformers talk. There's a lot of Godzilla talk that happens. Um... Which I'm okay with. Uh, if you enjoyed the podcast and you're able to rate, review, subscribe, all that good stuff on um, whatever platform you use, if it has that ability, if it doesn't, like just share it with other people who you think would enjoy it. Share it with your friends. Definitely share it with your enemies. Alienate your coworkers. Uh, absolutely, you will alienate coworkers with this yeah. one. There, there's no doubt about that. Um, also, show it to people who uh, who um, don't like uh, banter. Because they'll absolutely love it. Oh, yes. They're They're a very big fan. If they dislike our banter so much, they feel the need to make a comment on it. They're the people we want listening. Statistically, those episodes will do better. Yes, we want... We want people to. We want those people to be listening because it will make us have better numbers. Because, you know... Yeah. Um... (laughs) So, uh, Brandon, it's your turn to do your plugs. It is. You could find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com. And my Twitter is at crypto Brandon. <laughs> That's how you know it's the end. Yep. On Instagram, I'm at mu2057. On Twitter, I'm at JF Dunham. My website is johndunhamgames.com. And you can email me at john at cryptopediacast.com. Our art was done by Tom Hill. You could find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com. And his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. Tom Hill Watch, did you see him in, in person recently? I did not see him in person recently, no. Well, I've been okay. I've I've been leaving the house. Fair enough. Um, so as always, I'm John. I'm Brandon, and things are gonna get weird. <laughs> <laughs>